Artificial intelligence is infiltrating boardrooms around the world, impacting business decisions and influencing discussion about how to safely and responsibly embrace AI to drive innovation. Joining me live is Noel Russell, global industry lead for generative AI at Accenture and founder of the AI Leadership Institute, a world leading expert in artificial intelligence. First of all, um, thanks so much for joining us, Noel. We've heard of chat GPT, but just to explain what generative AI is. Absolutely, thank you so much for having me. Uh, generative AI, I think one of the best things about it is that it is a new user interface, kind of like the phone had a, you know, a trackpad first and then a screen or a drop-down list or a menu. Now our user interface for talking to technology is just your voice, just the ability to communicate with human language and not just English, but any number of languages. GPT-4 has been listed to, to be able to speak up to 100 languages. So something that really changes our perspective on how we can communicate to robots. A recent report from the Tech Council of Australia estimates that generative AI could contribute as much as $115 billion to the Australian economy annually by 2030. Just explain to us why they think that. Yeah, so we did a similar study at Accenture around kind of hours, and, and oftentimes people get concerned about AI, about what it will do and how much it will do. And what we found was it's very good at tasks, at doing very specific tasks. And when you ask someone, what is what bothers you in your day? What takes too long? What do you feel like you shouldn't really do? What do you feel like you're too qualified to do? Many times people refer to like email and PowerPoint creation. These types of tasks take up about 30 to 40 percent of our day and can be augmented with artificial intelligence, allowing us to shift our focus to higher value work, making happier employees and, of course, happier customers. You've built some of the largest AI models in the world. What industries are likely to benefit the most from this sort of artificial intelligence? Well, you can imagine, right, generative AI is all about creation of uh, answers, new ideas. And so there's two areas that are very, very critical in this space. One is on content creation, not content publishing so much, but how do we get off the blank page as a creator? And then on the other side, how do we improve human connection to systems that are complex and maybe overly so? And so what we're seeing is industries that have customers that want to talk to the brand in any way, executing transactions actions, asking for help. These things are very much in alignment with what generative AI can do, allowing you to just say what you want and have a system understand what you said and then actually help you get the answer you need. I've seen websites where AI can make you a business logo by just typing in what you want. I've seen websites where you can upload a photo of a product and it'll create a professional photo shoot like background for that product. Obviously great time and money making saving tools for business, but I think of all the graphic artists, photographers who are probably going to be out of work because of this. It's an interesting concept um, and something that at Accenture in our early days, early last year, we started to be very careful about the types of use cases that we went after. And one of the things that we realized is that there are plenty of areas that actually do not have this same concern. Plenty of areas that actually allow creators to be more creative, that reduce some of the the maybe manual or um, we call it the drudgery of creative tasks can be absolved by some of this technology. So many times we often start with the creator themselves, whether um, I was a, one of the specialists doing a hackathon at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. And one of the questions we asked them was not, you know, how do we do your job for you, but what hurts you? <laughs> what bothers you in the way that you do work today? And they, at first, again, were very kind of, I'm not sure I like this technology thing. But by the end, they were like, this is, there may even have been tears of joy, right? Like, okay, I love a technology that allows me to focus on what is uniquely human about what I create and what I do. So I think there's a lot of literacy that needs to happen, which is why I do what I do and why I came here to Sydney to talk about it. And, and of course, um, you know, a big part of this is this is a new frontier for businesses and it's making sure that businesses know how to integrate AI ethically into all structures of the business, right? 
Absolutely. And we often call it kind of accountable or responsible AI. And what that means is that there's a, a way to think about using this technology. Some of the principles we have learned, as you mentioned, I've worked on some of the largest language models in the world, and we realized something. It actually wasn't, the technology is very important, but an even more critical part of building an AI system is the humans that build it, the humans that train it, the humans that use it. And so building what I call empathetic engineering teams or in inclusive engineering teams that are really thinking about how everyone will use this technology and then thinking a bit beyond kind of our own unique perspective on how an AI solution should be built and think about like I have six children I have a dad I take care of my perspective on what these systems need to do is very different than someone who maybe just got out of university and is you know starting their career for the first time and all those perspectives are necessary to build AI that serves everyone. The future is going to look very different. Noel Russell, thanks so much. Have a great weekend.